felting artist and shepherd at Bear Creek Felting. When my daughter Libby was seven years old, she had asked if she could learn how to knit. And I myself did not know how to knit. And so I went to the store and we picked out a book and some needles and some yarn. And together we learned how to knit. I have an aunt who really loves the fiber arts. She showed us how she would spin the wool and all her projects and we fell in love with them all. For Libby's eighth birthday, she asked for a lamb and we live on a farm. I grew up with sheep where the kids were showing cattle at the county fair and so the idea of sheep wasn't too far out there for her to ask. And since we had gotten into knitting and since we had gotten into wool yarns and, and things like that, I kind of was excited at the thought myself. And so we found some sheep and surprised Libby on her eighth birthday. She got two lambs and I got two lambs. The kids have enjoyed showing sheep at the county fair for, for many years and we chose Romney sheep and we chose them for their wool and their temperament. They have a real mild temperament and they're smaller sheep and amazingly enough how things turned out, they're amazing for needle felting. The Romney wool is perfect for that. The lady that we purchased the Romney sheep from, her name is Jan and she invited us to a group called the Woolly Women. These ladies, they meet every month and they all have raised sheep or raised sheep and they do everything with the fiber arts from knitting to spinning, weaving, uh, needle felting. Jan herself did the needle felting and that is the first time I'd ever seen needle felting. I had never heard of it before that. So we attended our first Woolly Women gathering and at this gathering, I wanted to learn how to spin uh, the wool into yarn and so I was being taught how to spin and which is can be quite frustrating when you're first starting out and I was struggling away at that and while I was struggling away at the, the spinning wheel Jan was teaching Libby how to needle felt. Uh, Libby is my daughter and she made a, a Santa Claus that day with Jan and Jan sent her home with a cushion to work on and some needles and we had wool of course and so that evening when Libby went to bed I went in her room and snatched up her her needle felting supplies and played around till three o'clock in the morning making a sheep, a needle felted sheep. And I was in love with the art and that was the, the beginning and I and I never stopped with the needle felting. I, I really enjoyed it. Well Libby and I fell in love with the woolly women and still attend all the woolly women events that we can and they have been my biggest fans and my biggest support and I have learned so much from them over the years. And so we continue to to go to the Woolly Women gatherings and we also would go with them to demonstrate spinning and, and fiber arts. While demonstrating at a local event, I had people interested in purchasing my needle felted items and I was pretty excited about that, that they would actually want to pay money for something I had made. So I, I sold them, of course. So it's, it's hard to to sell things when you live on a farm in the middle of, of nowhere. And so I started selling my needle felted sculptures on eBay. And so I, I sold on eBay for, for quite a while. And then I had heard about Etsy. And so I checked into Etsy. In 2008, I opened my Etsy shop. Etsy has, has been amazing for my business. I wouldn't really be where I am in, in my business without selling on Etsy. I worked really hard on social media and getting the word out about what I do and sharing pictures. My hobby before needle felting was photography. I really enjoy photography. I had some practice in that area which worked really well with selling online. When I started selling on Etsy I was just selling my needle felted art. That that went really well. It was, it was really fun. Then I had people start asking me how I did this or how I did that with the needle felting. I was I was teaching local groups how to needle felt. I was teaching 4-H kids. I was doing classes. I had done a bear class at a local 4-H event and it occurred to me that I could put these instructions in, you know, write them down on paper and, you know, take pictures and put all of the things that they need and make a kit. And so I started with the bear kit, wrote the instructions and started selling those online several kits over the years. It's hard to to have time to make enough of the art and needle felting is a very time-consuming process. It takes hours and hours and, and lots of stabbing with the needle to to create something. Some of the items that I make take a week and 
And so the demand was there for me to, to sell a lot of my, my pieces, but I wasn't able to keep up and to, to make enough money in that way. So when I started selling the needle felting kits, that really helped to fill in the gap where I was still creating art. I really enjoyed teaching others and giving them the tips and, and things and, and supplying the, the wool. The, the variety of wool that you'd find in a, in a craft store is not the same as you'd find you know, straight from a farm and, and is not processed in the same way and it's not always the best for needle felting and so it was exciting to be able to share all the proper equipment and all the, the best for that and to give them the tips and to help them to learn how to needle felt like, like I needle felt. All my, my kits are designed for beginners. So even if you've never heard of needle felting before, you should be able to, to complete the project. Um, and everything is in the kit and they're all really easy. I'd had over the years people wanting to move on from there. They wanted something a little harder. They would ask for kits on the, the other things I was making, like the giraffe, which is a realistic detailed giraffe. And I didn't know how to put that into a kit form. It would be a booklet and it would, and, it, and it's a little too complicated for a kit. And so I thought I would make a online course for that and with videos. And so I did, I started with a sheep course and then in 2017, I opened the Bear Creek Needle Felting Academy. And what that is, is I have a library of video courses. And when you become a member, you have access to all the video courses. Not only that, you can watch the courses at any time and you can visit with other members. And you can also ask me questions and you can get feedback on your work. So you can post pictures of what you've made and ask me you know, what, what does this need? Where, where is this going wrong? And I can give you pointers and things. And, and I started that in 2017. And today I have 270 members. And these members pay monthly or, or yearly to be members. That has gone really well and I've really enjoyed getting to know these people and giving them this opportunity and creating new courses all the time for them to, to learn. And, and it's fun to hear what they want to learn next and to, to help them. And, they also have the opportunity, they can use their own materials, but they can um, get a kit through me with all the materials that they'll need to complete the video course animals that they're making. They can use the wool that I use, that I use to put the video together, the exact same colors and the exact same wool to get the same results that, that they see me getting. And they have step-by-step -step instructions in the videos on how to do all of these projects. And I walk them through it and give them tips and it has just gone really, really well. We had sheep when I was growing up on our farm, so I had a little background in, in raising sheep before we got our sheep, and we started out with the four. We've always had the Romney sheep, which are our favorite, and we have, over the years, added different breeds here and there, um, Blue Faced Lester, and we've added Wensleydale. More recently, we've added a little bit of Cormo into the flock, and our goal has always been to get the perfect needle felting wool, I think we have an amazing quality wool right now and needle felters love to work with my wool and I've had a lot of praise and excitement over my wool. I think it's only going to get better as we breed the sheep for the quality of their wool and it continues to grow to meet the demand that to have enough wool to go into all of the kits that I'm selling. We're we're growing the flock to raise enough wool for all of our projects. I have thoroughly enjoyed raising sheep. There has been difficult times as you will definitely find raising sheep. They're not the easiest animal to raise and it's a lot of learning experiences over the years and just when we think we have it figured out, we are forced to learn something new. <laughs> Favorite time of year is lambing time and it's really exciting to to run out to the barn for the first lamb and to bring life into the world and to to nurture them and take care of them. It's sheep need a lot of care. I just love that part of it and to be there for them, to watch them be really, really good moms. Um, it just warms my heart to be there, to be able to save lambs and to, to help them when there's been difficulties during birth is, is very rewarding and, and I wouldn't give it up for anything. And, and I, very blessed to be able to live here and to do what I love and to raise sheep and to enjoy all of these beautiful animals. 
recently I've had customers that would like to come and work one-on-one -on -one with me. And right now I'm working out of, right now I'm in my bedroom. <laughs> that's my office. Uh, my basement is full of wool and that's where I process the kits. I, I assemble the kits down there That's and, and I sell a lot of different colors of wool. And so that's half of my basement. And so the need to expand and get everything out of my house and, and has been a need that has been growing over the years. When people have had the interest of wanting to come and work one-on-one -on -one with me to learn needle felting straight from me, I thought that a place for them to come and to stay and um, experience everything fiber arts and just a beautiful place to be to experience the animals as I've had a lot of interest in in people wanting to come and, and see my sheep and my farm and that is where we develop Shepherd Industries and we are working on the Gnome Schoolhouse to have a place for people to come and work with me and learn from me and I can't wait to share what I know with them and work one-on-one -on -one with them and give them the opportunity to meet the animals that are providing the fiber. And now partnering with Chris, I will be able to provide more wool, colors of wool. We will be able to um, keep up with the demand for my kits much, much easier. I will be able to develop more kits because I know that I have Chris on the mill to, to get enough wool and to get all the colors and everything will always be available. Chris and I are excited as we have more and more ideas and when we get in our building and can work together, we're going to, to create even more things, more amazing ideas will be put together and we'll have the, the space. We'll be able to work together, our minds will, we just feed off each other. The ideas that we come up with when we're only together for a few hours is, is amazing and so we're excited to see what we'll be able to do when we get in the Gnome Schoolhouse.